So welcome to our intermediate class this week. Our theme this week is around rest. And um, that doesn't mean that we're going to do Shavasana for the whole class, although some days that would probably be a really nice option. Um, but that we're going to find ways of resting within our effort, um, as well as taking little breaks throughout the class. So um, if you're anything like me, you tend to kind of go until you're exhausted and then rest. Um, but taking the time to take little bits and bite-sized rests along the way is really good for our nervous system. Right? So when we're busy and we're stressed, our nervous system kind of ramps up. And um, we all know stress is not good for our health. Um, so taking these, these little times, these moments to check in, to rest, to recharge throughout the day um, is really key in keeping our stress levels at a, at a manageable rate. So we're going to start with rest, <laughs> and here's where the, the blanket, so if you have a blanket, um, it may be really handy here. And the idea is that we want to open the chest a little bit. So most of the time, you know, when we're sitting or even standing, we tend to be a little bit hunched over, and these muscles in the chest shorten, um, we get weak in the back, and it feels tight because of it. And so bringing, we're going to take the blanket along the length of the spine. And... Um, Doing that can, um, can help to open this area up, bring more blood flow um, into the area and allow us to get a little more easeful with the breath without the effort. Um, so, so that's the idea, but it's not comfortable for everyone. So if it's not comfortable for you, you don't have to stay with it. If you don't have a blanket, it's handy, or it feels weird when you get there, don't worry about it. Just taking the arms to the sides in this kind of position, opening them, helps to open this area as well. So it's just a little extra support. So I'm gonna show you how, how it works with your blanket. So if you've got a blanket like this, mine is just folded in half once and then in half again. So it's this kind of shape and size. And I have on mine tassels on one end. Right? You might as well, if you do, great. If not, doesn't matter. But if you have the tassels, they're all on one end. And what you're going to do is, there's two ways you can do this. You can just simply roll it up, right? That's the easiest way probably, but it's a little less stable. And then the other way is to accordion it. So if I take it to the ground and just place it down, I can kind of one, two, three, four sections. So now instead of being a roll, it's flat. So you've got a nice flat shape and you're going to have tassels on one end if you have tassels. Those tassels you want to put on your mat with the tassels where your head is going to be roughly, okay? So it's going to go along the length of your mat, tassels at the top where your head would be. And then you're going to sit down on your mat right in front. So you're going to put your bum down right in front of the, of the end of the blanket, the non-tassel end, if you're working with fringe. So you're going to sit down right at the edge. And then you're going to roll back. And if your hips feel a little bit uh, off kilter, you can pick them up and kind of tuck under and, and lengthen your lower back. You can also move up or down a little bit to be as comfortable as possible. And then you want to make sure your head is on the blanket. So if your blanket is short and your head is off the blanket, you're going to hyperextend your neck. So you want to bring a pillow under your head if that's the case. And if you still feel like you want a little support, more support, and your head is already on the blanket, you can take the end and just kind of roll it under to give yourself a bit of a pillow. So. If that's comfortable for you, you can stay here. Your knees can be bent or your legs can be straight. It doesn't matter. And then you're going to take your arms a little bit out to the sides. And you really want to find a comfortable position here. So if you feel like it's pulling across your chest and you have to kind of resist that with some tension, move the arms down a little bit. So play around until you find a position where you feel a gentle stretch across the chest. You feel some opening but it doesn't feel like it's straining you in any way, okay? And then when you get there, I'm just gonna take a few minutes here 
to really solidly tune in, check in, release, relax, and feel what it feels like. Just take a little bit of a rest in your day. So maybe you're good at that. Maybe you're a napper. I'm, I'm not. And so I really have to force myself sometimes to just slow down for a moment, breathe, and come back to myself in the day. So let's take a moment now to tune in and check in with the different aspects of our being. So let's start by really tuning in with the body. So noticing in your body where you might be holding tension. And I'm just gonna sit so it's a little easier for me to uh, to talk and teach, but please stay lying down over your blanket or without the blanket as you prefer. Tuning into your body and noticing, are you holding tension anywhere? Could you soften? Do you need to move your body a little bit to be more in tune, more comfortable, more relaxed? Can you let go? Are you aware of tension in your body? And, and if you are, notice that. See if you can notice without judgment. And even notice without trying to push it away or change anything. So we start to be aware of our bodies as they are. And many of us in, in all kinds of different ways have gone through life wishing our bodies were different in some way. Whether we wish they were stronger, thinner, taller, whatever it is. And can we just for this moment completely accept our bodies as they are? Even if they're uncomfortable. And of course, if there's a way that you can shift to be more comfortable by all means do but sometimes there's discomfort that we can't sort of avoid can we acknowledge and make friends with that allowing our bodies to be exactly as they are in this moment being grateful even for these bodies that carry us through life And then tuning into your breath. Feel the breath move into your body. Feel how it expands. And then let the breath go. Just let it fall out without effort. Breathing in and breathing out with minimal effort. We don't need to work to breathe. The body breathes on, it, on its own. So tuning into your breath. Feeling it like delicious food for your lungs, breathing it in. From there, it distributes through the body, bringing energy and vitality to your whole body. And the more you can relax your muscles, the more that blood flow is naturally able to happen. And so through relaxation, we get that sense of ease and flow in the body. And notice your mind. Is your mind busy while your body is at rest? And if that is the case, simply notice. So we're not bringing any aggression to our rest. We're just resting and noticing. We're not pushing, pulling, or trying to make it different. Notice your thoughts. And then also be aware of any emotions that may be present. 
what your mood is like today. again without trying to change anything simply be aware bring your awareness and notice what is present are you aware of any emotions maybe you're not great so I mentioned earlier, we won't be spending the whole class in Shavasana, so we will start to think about adding in a little bit of, of movement, but start by deepening your breath. So letting the breath gently deepen. You can even imagine how deepening the breath sends a little more energy to your fingers and toes, to your head, to your whole body. And then when you're ready, if you're on this blanket, you can just roll to one side, remove your blanket, and come back onto your back. So we'll start with some nice easeful warm-ups here before we get into our more vigorous practice in a, in a little bit, but we'll start with some nice easeful movement so feet on the floor knees bent and we'll rock the knees a few inches one way and the other so we're just rocking the weight across the sacrum in the back of the body bringing some ease across the back of the hips and then you can come into a more full twist if you like. But with the full twist, I'm gonna invite you to work with the breaths in a way that you're only moving on your exhalation. So you exhale as you go to the side, inhale as you stay there, exhale back to center, inhale here, exhale to the other side, inhale there, Exhale to center. So if that breathing pattern works for you, continue. So you inhale when you're stationary. Exhale when you move. Inhale when you're stationary. Exhale when you move. And if you prefer a different pattern of breathing, then please feel free to move in the way that feels most good to you, feels best to you. And then coming back to the center, we'll bring the knees to the chest, one hand to each knee, and move the knees forward and back to bring back some alignment to the spine and the hips after the twist. Giving the back a little bit of a massage and stretch. So you're just moving forward and back, even if that's just a little bit of movement. If you like, you can coordinate your breathing. Exhale, knees come in as you squeeze the breath out. Inhale as you make space for the breath. And then keeping one knee into the chest, bring one foot to the floor. And we'll stretch the hamstrings a little bit so you can take the leg that's in toward your chest, stretch toward the ceiling, bend it in toward the chest. So we'll bend and straighten a few times to gently ease into that motion. We're going to work with the legs and hips a little bit uh, primarily today. But you can leave the leg in the air, find the stretch that's just right for you. So bring the knee in a little closer or move it further away if you want you can also extend the leg that's on the ground that's going to give you a bit more stretch so if it's too much just bend the knee again you can circle the ankle of the leg that's up in the air and then press the heel up toward the ceiling feel how that stretch moves all the way up the leg 
we're just warming up. So really, in fact, never want to, to force our bodies beyond what feels like a good stretch. And it's so counterintuitive because it feels like if we just keep pulling, right, the body's going to stretch and release more, but the nervous system kicks in at a point and it says, oh dear, you're going to hurt me. And it actually creates a resistance when we push past a safe place in our bodies. Right, let's bend that knee, bring it in toward the chest. And now you can straighten the other leg and we'll do a little movement with that knee. So you can circle the knee that's up Going in little circles, you can pass it from one hand to the other. Just play around with getting some movement into that hip in whatever way feels good for you. If you like, you can add a deeper twist by bringing the leg across the body, rolling onto your side and bringing it over if that feels good. Eventually coming back onto your back, maybe going out to the other side of that leg. And another moment here, just to move in whatever would, whatever way would feel good. Okay, and then let's bring that foot down. Bend both knees for a moment. We're gonna press into both feet, lift the hips up into a mini bridge. Think about knees moving away from the shoulders, pressing down with the arms, and then as you release down, let the spine roll down till the hips come to the ground. And then you'll bring the other knee in toward your chest. And again, you can reach behind or you don't need to hold on at all for this as we straighten and bend that leg. So again, if we force beyond what's available to us in, each, in any moment, we're going to end up creating resistance in the body. So we're just going to that first level of where you feel restriction and then bending. Feel that little bit of stretch and then release. And in time, as we do this, the body releases a little bit more, a little bit more. As the hamstrings stretch, the thigh engages. So as you hold the leg up there, you might feel how the the muscles of your quadriceps have to engage. You can hold the leg as well if you like, and we'll circle this ankle around. Notice what you're aware of as you do this. And as I'm circling my ankle, I'm realizing there's a lot more sensation, a lot more stretch on this side than there was on the other. So notice what's true for you. Press the heel gently toward the ceiling. See how that affects the stretch in the back of the leg. If it's too much stretch, you're gonna bend the knee. If you want more, you can always gently bring it in, but never to the point where you start to create tension. So check in with your jaw, your face, your shoulders, your neck. Okay, and then let's bend the knee. And you can extend the other leg on the ground. And we'll do some movements into that hip. So circling the knee around one way, the other way. You can go out side to side if you like. Maybe adding that twist if it feels good for you. Pause there for a breath or two. Whatever feels good. You can also come back and open the knee out to the side. Let your body be the guide. You don't have to work at my pace or my suggestions. Just whatever will feel good. And when you eventually come back to the center, you bring that foot to the floor, bend the other knee, bring it also to the floor. And again, we're going to lift up into that little bridge. Again, think about the knees moving away from the shoulders, press down with the arms, and then we're going to roll the spine down coming down to the hips, and again, bringing the knees in toward the chest. Then this time, stretching both legs toward the ceiling, the arms lifting towards the floor behind you. Breathe in here, and then exhale, squeeze into a little ball, and then inhale to extend. Exhaling to squeeze. Inhaling to extend. And a couple more like that. Okay, 
and then holding the knees, you can rock or circle, whatever would feel good to massage and release the back a little bit. And then let's bring the feet back to the floor. And we'll take the arms down alongside the body and line the feet up so that the heels are more or less under the knees and your heels are about the distance apart of your hips. Toes and heels, ideally parallel to one another, though if the toes turn out a little bit and that makes it more comfortable for you, that, that's fine as well. So palms down and hands against the ground, arms active, but not tense. So we just want to feel that the arms are engaged a little bit. And then press down into the feet, feel your tailbone start to lift. We're going to peel the spine up slowly off the ground, keeping that little bit of activity in the arms, gently pressing down. And then when you reach the top of your bridge, think about knees moving from shoulders, so the top line of your body lengthens and then slowly release the way you came up. So rolling the spine down to the ground to release. Take a breath at the bottom and then again, press into the feet, curling the tailbone up and then peeling the spine up off the ground, using your arms to help with that sense of lift, lengthening from shoulders to knees, and then releasing, slowly rolling down. And we'll do this a few times. So take your time. There's no specific way you need to breathe here. We're taking our time, so I take several breaths to lift. When you get to the top, really engage, press down with the arms, relax the jaw, face, neck, pause for a breath or two, lengthening the body, and then release. Next time you're in the pose, you can stay a little longer. Again, use your arms for support. Feel your legs starting to work. So the idea here is to engage and feel the legs. You want to relax your upper body. Imagine almost, except for your arms, that your upper body is just hanging off your legs. Your legs are doing the work. The arms are engaged gently. Neck, face, jaw, all relax. Good. And then let's slowly release down. You can give your knees a hug for a moment. Maybe rock a little side to side, whatever would feel good. So we're going to come back into bridge and we're going to do some variations with the legs a little stronger um, work. And there's a couple of options with the shoulders. So I wanted to point them out to you before we go there so that you can choose what feels best for you. So the first option is just to keep your arms as they were down to the sides, using them to help press down to support the base of your pose. The second option is to actually bend the elbows and have the hands facing each other over your chest. And for some people that gives a little more kind of strength and oomph to the arms and a little more lift. So you can try that. And then another option is to take your shoulders and kind of tuck them underneath. So what you do is rock from one side to the other as you roll the shoulders under. And some of you then may be able to comfortably clasp your hands and press down. And that gives a nice firm base to the body as well in this pose. So you get to choose which uh, version works for you and you can come down anytime you want. So we're going to actually work to create some strength here. So when you're ready, if you are not in the pose, so some of you may have already come up while I was demonstrating, which means lift up and find the version that you like. And then make sure your knees are over your ankles so the knees aren't out to the sides. And you're going to shift your weight to one foot. And if it's not a strain for you, you can bring the other knee in towards your chest. 
you can bring that foot down, shift to that foot and bring the other knee in. Good, release. Come back to both feet, lift the hips, grow long from the shoulders to the knees. Know that if you need to take a break anytime, you absolutely can. So let's come back to the first foot, shift, bring the knee in, stretch the leg up toward the ceiling. And pause, you can lift a little higher if that's available. Bend the knee, bring it down. Other side, knee in, reach up, hold and breathe. Bend the knee, bring the foot to the floor, lift the hips a little more. If you're holding your hands, release them, wiggle your shoulders apart, and slowly release down. Knees to chest, any movement here that would feel good to release. Right. And then feet to the floor. We're gonna do one more round of bridge. This time we'll raise the leg as we did, but instead of bringing it back to the chest, we're going to bring it straight down to the ground and then in. Okay, so really listen to your body. I know this is, can be a bit challenging. So we want to try to keep as much ease in the body where we can, right? Chest, face, neck, head, um, all of that. And, and work just with the parts of the body that are working. And right? so if you start finding yourself tensing up parts of your body that you don't need to, then you might want to come down and take a break and rest. So it's really about listening to our bodies and knowing when we need to rest and when we can, when we have the strength to keep sort of going. So feet under the knees, heels under the knees, hands at your sides, press down with your feet to begin and then start to lift the hips, coming up into bridge pose. Again, choose the position with your arms, so either at your sides, bent, or underneath you held, whatever feels best for you. And then again, shift your weight to one leg, bring the other knee in, lift that leg toward the ceiling. It doesn't have to be straight, but it can be if that's possible. And then slowly lower it straight down to the ground. Take your time. You might feel a little shaking. When your heel comes to the ground, you're gonna bend the knee, bring it back under you, lift back up, reestablish the strength in your bridge, and then other knee comes in, reaching up, and then again, slowly, slowly, taking it down. When your heel comes to the ground, bend the knee, bring the foot back under your knee, lift up, lengthen from your shoulders to your knees. And then again, if your arms are clasped under you, you can release and wiggle your shoulders apart and then slowly come on down, bring your knees to your chest. And again, whatever movement feels good. So rock side to side, circle, or move the knees forward and back. Letting go of the effort of bridge now. Let's take a little rest here to integrate. So feet can come to the floor, you can rest your hands on your body or on the ground. Take a couple of nice deep breaths, letting go, letting go of the effort of that bridge pose. And coming back into this place of ease and softness in your body.
So notice the thoughts in your mind. Is it easy for you to rest or is your mind telling you to get on with it? Is your mind busy? Are the thoughts full in your mind or is it easy for you to just soften and be? So again, no judgment. We're just noticing. So as you're ready now, we're going to roll over onto one side and come upright. And we'll make our way right onto all fours, onto hands and knees. And we'll work with cat-cow just to, uh, to begin with straight up, and then we'll be adding some movement of the legs in. So starting with a, a breath in, chest forward, soft elbows. As you exhale, either rounding or rounding and going to child's pose. And repeating that. Inhale, all fours, exhale, either just rounding into cat or rounding all the way to child's pose. And then as you come into the inhale, as you lift up, raising one leg, and then bringing it in as you exhale. And then the other leg, and bringing it in. Right, and then let's try coming up to all fours. You need to raise one leg, bend the knee, good, lift it up toward the ceiling, and draw it down a little. So lift and lower. Good. And then bring it in towards your nose, round your back, squeeze in, and release. And then other side, same thing. So we'll stretch the leg back, bend the knee, flex your foot, and then lift and lower the knee a little. Good. All right, and then draw the knee toward your nose, round, squeeze in. Good. And knee down. Let's inhale, finding a little lift in the heart. Exhale, moving to child's pose. And we'll stay here for a few breaths. So if you want, you can take your knees apart or you can leave them together, whatever's comfortable for you. Resting your head on your hands or on the ground. Again, whatever works for you. I'm taking a few breaths here. Find that resting with energy in your body. Officially, child's pose isn't considered a proper rest because there's a constriction in the breath. So to be considered a, a real rest, there should be absolutely no restriction in the breath. But we can take a pause here and, and kind of pseudo rest. And then we'll come back up to all fours. And now we're going to move into downward dog and work with one leg at a time. So tucking your toes under, let's first come into downward dog and maybe walk on the spot to open up the back of the calves and ankles a bit. And then let's release down to the knees again. So in downward dog, 
want to make sure that your hands are planted. Um, and the action in downward dog is almost like you're trying to pull your hands together on the mat without actually moving them. And that creates a kind of openness in your shoulders. Probably most of you will want to have slightly bent knees. And when you bend your knees, that lengthens the spine. When the legs are straight, the and if your hamstrings are tight, the spine tends to, um, to round. So we want to have a nice long spine, pressing into the arms, and then we're going to work with one leg at a time. So hands under the shoulders to start with, or even a little ahead of your shoulders. Tuck your toes under. And now imagine you're pulling your mat together with your hands without moving your hands. So you're engaging your arms, press into your hands, lift the knees, and keep that feeling of pulling together gently with your hands, opening up the back of your shoulders. Bend your knees and lengthen your spine. So hips moving back away from the head. Let your head come between your arms. And then we'll take one leg, we'll stretch it straight back. Both hip bones pointing toward the ground so you haven't turned the hips. And then if it's comfortable for you, you can turn so that your the hip of the leg that's lifted comes to the side on top of the other leg and then bend the leg that's up in the air. It's reaching back behind you. If it's comfortable, you can lift your head as if you're going to bring your foot to your head. And then release. Before we do the other side, let's take a little break. You can come down. Maybe sit back on your heels and do a little release for your wrists. And know that you can take breaks anytime you need them. That's kind of the, the point of our class today is to, to really listen and take those rests as you need them. So when you're ready, we'll come back into downward dog and we'll work with the other side. So again, hands under the shoulders or slightly ahead. You're engaging by gently pulling the hands towards each other. Tuck your toes under, lift the hips, press into your arms, let your head come between your arms. Soft knees, so the spine can stay nice and long. And then lifting the other leg, hip bones point at the ground. If it feels comfortable, you can start to turn so the upper, the leg that's up becomes the hip that's on top. And then maybe let that knee bend and come behind you and perhaps lift the head, imagining your toe can come to the back of your head somehow, somewhere. And then release, foot down, come back to all fours. And let's move back into child's pose for a few breaths. Coming back to that kind of a rest, a restful pose, we'll say. Breathing here. And then let's come upright and we're going to move into lunge and work a little bit moving in and out of lunge. So here your blanket um, may be handy again. So if you, if you just take it and maybe fold it over so that it's a, a bit of padding, then we'll step forward with one leg and then you can take your blanket if you like and bring it underneath your back knee. So this is, uh, this is optional. I find my knee appreciates a little extra padding. If you can reach the ground as you are, great. You might come to your fingertips or if you have them, blocks might be handy here. So take your front foot and bring it forward of your front knee. Okay. So that your foot is at least a few inches forward of your front knee so that when you rock forward into lunge, your knee and your ankle line up. Okay. When you rock back, you don't wanna go further than hip over knee, okay? So if you don't feel stretch in your front leg when you rock back, wiggle your front foot even more forward. You can lift your toes if you like to get a little more stretch. So we'll rock forward into a nice, Wide lunge, it doesn't matter if your foot's beyond your knee, that's fine. Rock back, 
can lift the toes if you like, maybe bring the head down, rock forward, lift the chest, and rock back. Great. So now we're going to come into lunge, and if you find that that foot is way far out in front of you, you're just going to drag it back so that when you come into lunge, again, your knee is over your ankle. Now imagine you're going to pull your back knee forward toward the front of the mat. At the same time, imagine you're pulling your front foot back towards the back of your mat, so you'll feel your legs really wake up and engage. Tuck your back toes under now. Keep that engagement as you lift the knee. Engage all through the thighs and hips. If you like, you can bring your hands onto your front knee. Okay. And then whichever leg is back, you're gonna take that arm, lift it up. So same arm as the leg that's back. And then you're gonna swing it down and reach back and reach it down towards your knee. Right, let's bring both hands down and lower the back knee. Shift your weight back and bring that foot back. And then maybe a couple of rounds of cat-cow, evening out your spine and hips before we do the other side. Come to child's pose if you like. Right. And then when you feel ready, we're going to do the other side. So whichever leg was back will now be your forward leg. So we're going to bring that foot forward. Again, foot a little bit forward of the knee at least. You can use blocks or be on your fingertips. Wiggling that front foot forward enough so that when you rock forward, the knee doesn't go past your ankle. And when you rock back, you feel some stretch in the back of that front leg without putting your hip back behind your back knee. So again, you can lift your front toes, let your head come down to get a stretch in the back of the leg and then release forward. So we'll rock forward and back a few times. Great, and then next time you're rocking back, you're gonna bring your foot down so that when you come into lunge, your knee and ankle line up. So you can wiggle around so you find that just right spot. And then again, your back knee is if you're pulling it forward, your front heel is if you're pulling it back without actually moving. Feel how that engages your legs. Tuck your back toes under. Keep that engagement as you lift the knee. Great. If you feel strong here and you're ready for more, you can lift your hands up onto your front knee. Good. Keep engaging, drawing your forward hip a little back, back hip a little forward. And then whichever leg is back, you're going to take the same arm and lift it up. You can use this hand on your thigh to support you. And then swing the arm down, bring it to your thigh and reach back towards the knee. You can look up if you like. Good, and then hands come down. Great, let's step forward now from your lunge. So you're coming to a standing forward bend, and then hands to shins, lengthen as you breathe in. Exhale as you let go. Inhale, hands to shins, long spine. Exhale, release and let go. Again. Good, you can stay in the forward bend for a few breaths. Alternate uh, position would be elbows on thighs or you can fold your elbows and hang or just let your arms dangle. When you're ready, you'll come up with a breath in, reaching the arms out to the sides, coming all the way up, and then releasing. 
lovely. So as you come to Tadasana or Mountain Pose, find your feet aligned up underneath your hips, heels under the sit bones. Arms down at your sides, heart lifting, crown of the head lifting as the shoulders drop down. See if you can find the most easeful expression of this pose. So can you soften your hands, your jaw, your face? The legs obviously need to work a little bit to hold you upright. But find the most balanced position where it's the least amount of effort. Good. Let's roll the shoulders. You can bend the knees and get your whole body into that movement. Mm. Lovely. Great, and then coming upright, let your arms hang, give them a little shake, soft knees, and we'll just let the body twist a little, letting the arms hit your body. and come back to the center. So in this one, we'll take one arm straight up, doesn't matter which, and then bring that hand down between your shoulder blades. And then the other arm is going to internally rotate, which means the hand, palm faces back, and you'll slide that hand back and move your hands towards each other. You may touch fingertips, you may not, it doesn't matter. Good. Lift the heart, drop the tail, and release. Give the arms a shake. And other side. So arm lifting, bring the hand back down between your shoulder blades. Need to get your hair out of the way. And then other arm internally rotates, so the hand turns back. And then slide that hand in and maybe find your fingertips. Maybe not. Some of you may be able to clasp your hand, but it is definitely not a requirement. Find a little lift in the heart. Drop through the tail. And release. So let's take the feet apart a little bit now and roll the shoulders one and then the other. Go the other direction as well. And come back to the center. So we're going to work um, with the pose called dancer pose, which is where we hold one leg behind us. And the trick here is that this back shoulder is internally rotating as we hold the foot. So we're holding the foot from the outside. And it's like we're resisting forward with the shoulder as the leg tries to pull us back. So it becomes a very contained pose of strength and balance. Um, so I'll show you and uh, then we'll try it together. So we'll, we'll be lifting one foot. You can use a, a chair or the wall if you need to, to hold on. And then we're going to draw that shoulder forward and resist. The other arm reaching up. And as you tip forward, you're going to press the foot back into your hand and resist forward with the shoulder, okay? So we can try that together. So let's first feel roots going down, feel really grounded and solid here. And then you'll shift your weight onto one foot and it doesn't matter which foot, because we'll do both. And as you shift your weight, now if you can't quite reach your ankle, you might use a belt or even a sock to, or hold your pant leg if that's uh, available. So you're going to reach back and take a hold of your foot. Now just let your leg hang there for a moment. Feel how it kind of pulls on the shoulder a little bit. And then resist. Draw your shoulder a little forward, not rounding it, but just resist a little. So you're back into a neutral position. Take the other arm, reach it straight up, 
We're going to hinge forward from the hip. As you hinge forward, press your foot back. At the same time, resist forward with your shoulder. This upper arm is reaching forward, but then you're throwing back with the shoulder to square the shoulders. Hips and shoulders stay square towards the front of your mat. Good. When you release, you're going to come back to where we started. Just let the leg hang again into your hand. Feel pull the shoulder down a little. Release the upper arm. Release the leg. Good. And maybe give everything a little shake before we go to the other side. So same thing. You want to feel both your feet on the ground. Feel really balanced on two feet sense of rooting down through your heels. And then from here, you can take the other leg and start by just letting the weight of your leg kind of draw your shoulder down away from your ear. You can resist a little bit with your shoulder. So again, we're not rounding and pulling forward, just finding a little strength in the shoulder. The other arm lifts. By the way, you probably chose your easier side first because that's what we tend to do as human beings. So if this side feels harder, it's probably absolutely normal. As you hinge forward from your hips, pressing back with that foot, resisting forward with the shoulder, resisting back with your forward arm to bring the hips and shoulders square to the front of your space. Mad if you're using it, same direction. Good. We'll come back to the starting position. Release the arm. Release the leg. Lovely. So again, give a little shake. Let go of the effort. And we'll do a few forward bends just to release the lower back after the back bend. So inhale and sweep the arms. Soften your knees. Exhale and sweep forward. And then inhale, sweep all the way up. And repeat that a few more times at your own pace. So last time, if you like, you can stay forward for a few breaths. Any variation of the forward bend that you like. And then pull all the way up. Big breath in, reaching overhead. And releasing the arms. So let's come back to our mountain pose, back to this kind of upright rest. You feel your heels sink into the ground. You can close your eyes if you like, but it's definitely not required if you feel like you're going to lose your balance. Soft gaze, open eyes. Feel your heels gently sink into the earth. Feel your thighs engage. Shoulders drop down. Find the least amount of effort here to stand. Let your breath come and go with as much ease as possible. There's nothing you need to do right now. Allowing your body to integrate the postures that we've just done. Rest and restore. You can rest in any position where we can breathe freely and we're comfortable. So standing, sitting, lying down. Check your body for tension. Check your jaw, your face, your neck, shoulders. There may be some effort in your legs, your hips, your core for standing, but everything else can soften around that effort. You notice how your weight is always shifting a little bit. There's always a little bit of movement. Your body's naturally doing its job to balance you. Unconscious, feel that little bit of movement in your body. Appreciate how wise your body is to shift 
keep you balanced without your conscious effort. Let's take one big breath in. <sighs> Exhale, soften the knees, give a little bounce, letting any tension flow out of your body. And then we are going to make our way back down to the ground and uh, start to wind down for our longer rest of the class, which is Shavasana. So you can make your way down onto your mat or ground, whatever you've got. When you get there, you bring your knees into your chest and do a little movement. Whatever would feel good to release after standing. And then when you feel ready, you can release your feet to the floor. If there's any other movement that your body is craving, by all means, feel free to, to do what would feel good to you right now. Otherwise, we're going to start to make our way to stillness and to relaxation. So <clears throat> if you really like to be supported back then with the blanket, you can recreate that for Shavasana but totally not necessary. Just if you really, really liked it and felt great for you, go ahead. If you're quite happy just lying on the ground, then uh, please do. So take your time, make those little adjustments as necessary to be as comfortable as you can. Yeah, see if you can really surrender to this time of rest and you let your body go. And you let go of thoughts of what needs to get done or what was left undone. You come into this moment as fully as possible, allowing yourself this time to rejuvenate. honoring your body's deep need to rest from time to time. Feel where your body makes contact with the earth and allow your body to surrender to that support, to that contact. Dropping in a little more deeply each exhalation. Bring your awareness down to your feet. And invite your feet to soften and relax and rest a little more deeply. Is there any way you could relax your feet a little bit more? Softening, finding ease, letting go. Relaxing your ankles and calves. Bringing your awareness there, and inviting a little more letting go and ease. Exhale, let your calves and ankles and feet relax even more. Bring your awareness to your knees and thighs. Bringing ease, softness, and relaxation to your knees and thighs. Letting go of any effort. Relaxing your 
As you exhale, softening from the thighs all the way down to the toes. Letting go. Exhaling, softening, bringing your awareness to the area of your pelvis, hips. Bring the ease, softness to this area of the body as much as possible. And where it's not possible to relax, bring lots of compassion. Not fighting with ourselves, but allowing whatever is to be while we invite deeper relaxation where we're able. Bringing the awareness to the belly and lower back now. Letting go of tension and holding in this area, very common area to hold tension. Each exhalation, find a little more softening, a little more ease. And letting that go, bring your awareness up to your chest and upper back, rib cage. Just holding here that you're aware of, and you let it go, can you soften even more? And you let the breath just happen without effort. Bringing your awareness now to your shoulders, arms, and hands. And finding as much ease in this area of your body as possible. Letting your hands, arms, and shoulders rest and relax. Nothing you need to do right now. And then letting go of your arms, hands, and shoulders, bring your awareness to your neck and throat. Find again as much ease and softness as you can in this area of your body. Connecting with compassion if there's tightness that you simply can't release today. Where we accept and include all parts of ourselves, the more we're integrated and working with our bodies rather than against them. Let your awareness come to your face, head, jaw, bringing as much softness and ease into this area of your body as is available to you right now. As you exhale, relaxing from head to toes to fingers, each breath, can you find a little more ease, a little more relaxation, a little bit more letting go? <clears throat> to soften the body, the circulation can move with more freedom, oxygen being brought to the cells of our body. Let go of tension and the body comes into its natural health, its natural workings. I'll share with you a chant that is about shining with peace, shining from within sense of ease and peace within ourselves. 
we all had moments where we felt inner peace and moments where we felt the opposite. As you rest, see if you can connect with the and sense of inner peace that may be available to you in the state of ease and relaxation. Shanna Indra Bruhas Patihi Shanna Vishnu Kramaha Namo Brahmane Namaste Vayu Tvam Eva Pratyaksham Brahmasi Tvam Eva Pratyaksham Brahmavadishyami Vritam Vadishyami Satyam Vadishyami Tanma Mavatu Tadvaktara Mavatu Avatu Vam Avatu Vaktaram Om Shanti 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 As you start to bring your awareness back to the room and deepen your breath, take with you the intention to carry this idea with you through the day of checking in and taking little moments, even if it's literally a minute, just to stop, to pause, to rest, to check in, to be present. And when we do that regularly, it, it creates like a string of pearls that is a beautiful way of reconnecting with ourselves and recharging our vital energy on a constant basis. So taking this idea with you that we don't have to take a two hour nap most days, maybe some days, but that we can recharge with these little mini moments of connecting with ourselves and softening and releasing. When you're ready, you can bring a bit of movement if you're ready to come out of rest now and back into your day adding a bit of gentle movement, keeping that delicious feeling of rejuvenation alive with you as you move, to whatever extent you are able to connect with that. If not, then it's something to work towards in the future as you work with this theme. And eventually when you're ready, you can roll onto your side and make your way upright slowly consciously. Bring your hands together. Namaste.